She's trying to piece pieces together in the country of Venezuela. What can you tell us? I know you just got out of a briefing there at the White House. What's happening in Venezuela, Kellyanne? Uh, good morning, Bill, and thanks for your indulgence there, Sandra, too. So, as you know, we stand with the people of Venezuela, and it's time for Maduro to go. We've made that very clear. Uh, we certainly support a peaceful transition. You've seen tweets just in the last few minutes from Secretary of State Pompeo, obviously Senator Rubio, Ambassador to Bolton, the NSC. And we want to review for you in quick order what Maduro has done to his people. He has starved them. He has denied them food and medicine and basic meeting of humanitarian needs. It's time for him to go. We know Chavez was in power for about 20 years. These things take time. This has gone on for about three months with Juan Guaido. But we support the people of Venezuela. And that is why we in the United States have tried to deliver so many supplies just to meet their basic needs. Three million Venezuelans have fled to neighboring countries like Colombia and Brazil. Uh, the average Venezuelan lost more than 20 pounds over the last year alone. This is a, a disgrace against humanity. And I think that Secretary of State Pompeo put it best in his recent tweet where he said this is Operation Libertad and uh, that we're going to stand with the people until, of course, they are free. And they are free from the grips of this madman in power, Maduro. Two specific questions. And one, Guaido is appealing to the military. Do you know if the military is responding to his call at this early hour, Kellyanne? That I'm not going to comment on. I'm just going to say that we believe that there can be a peaceful transition of power and that uh, you've seen the Maduros around the world who just cling to their power no matter how they've treated their own people. And it's just time for him to go. Uh, the vice president has made this clear over the last year. The president, we um, have certainly welcomed Mr. Guaido's uh, wife here recently and others, of course, who you know, we would refer to as, as freedom fighters, if you will. Yeah, um, on, so, on Maduro, no, though, have you heard from him? Do you know his whereabouts? Has anyone heard or seen him? Kellyanne? I am not aware of that. I certainly did not hear that in any briefing this morning. What is next from your perspective then from the White House? Are you watching and waiting or? We're is... watching and we're waiting and we hope the result is democracy and freedom for the people. I mean, the president, the president has made very clear all around this world that America first is not America alone and that we will stand in the breach when people like the Venezuelans are suffering, and they're suffering from a lack of food and medicine and having basic needs met. As the president has said, including very recently, Bill, Venezuela was one, once one of the wealthiest countries. And now you've seen what people in power who try to hang on to power and wealth for themselves and not share it with their own people, what's happened. There's been an exodus of Venezuelans, and we stand with the Venezuelan people, Let me, and we stand with Juan Guaido. Let me make that very mm -hmm. clear. It is a country in crisis. We will follow it. I, I've only yes. got about 90 more seconds here. Let's do a quick lightning round, okay? I had a yes, list sir. of things to talk about. Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer come to the White House next hour. What can you do together, Kellyanne? Well, hopefully infrastructure, and that they're serious about that, because we have crumbling bridges and roads in disrepair, uh, 260,000 water main breaks or so a year. Our air traffic control system was built to accommodate about 100,000 annual passengers. We now have close to 1 billion annual air passengers. So if they're serious about infrastructure and not indictment and impeachment, we welcome them, we welcome them here. This is a big bipartisan effort. Uh, it can't be the Green New Deal in disguise. It can't be a sop to uh, the environmentalists and the, and the labor unions, as I well, think we, some, we some remember, pieces of that letter suggested yeah. yesterday. Uh, we but true infrastructure, let's work on that together. We remember the last time they got together. Two more things. Bill Barr, will he testify for the House on Thursday, yes or no? Well, we'll leave that to him. He's certainly testifying to the Senate, so it's not like he's afraid to answer questions under oath. But the harassment of Bill Barr and the disrespect is completely disgraceful to this man who spent his career in public service and in private law practice. No, no less of a soul than Joe Biden voted for Bill Barr's confirmation as attorney general the first time around. And I think that people are just mad at Bob Mueller and his investigators for not getting the president in, in an interview, for shutting down the investigation before those who felt like they should okay, produce so the goods. I, I will take got it. That. So they're taking this yeah, on Bill I Barr, will. but I'll leave that to him. I think it's outrageous the way they want to play the system. And let me just say something about Jerry Nadler. I just read an interview in the last few minutes where he's saying that they can arrest people or fine them up to $20,000 a day for not complying with subpoenas to appear. Are we not actually going to do that? With, the, with Chuck and Nancy coming over to talk about infrastructure, are we actually dangling arrests of, of innocent citizens
for not complying with subpoenas. I think okay. Congress needs to calm down we a little will, bit on this. We will watch in the Senate on Wednesday. We'll see what happens in the House on Thursday. I'm out of time, but thank you for thank yours. Thank you, Bill. A lot of news this and morning, so thank you. You bet. Kellyanne Conway from the North Lawn.